Um, hi, I'm, I'm Dr. Youssef. I'll be presenting to you this case of uh, lamellar con developmental cataract, which uh, started, uh, this this kid is six years old, and uh, uh, started to develop a diminution of vision. He's known to have isotropia in addition. His, uh, his glasses are plus six, and his intraocular lens power was uh, calculated to be th to be 36. So uh, this case will start as usual. You can use a, a, a superior incision to be underneath the upper lid, but you can also use the temporal. I'm more comfortable with temporal incision. The same thing, we inject your via tracts into your chamber. And uh, the capsules here are very elastic and tricky, so I'll he use Helon 5 to avoid that it uh, runs away, uh, run away rexus. So it's very tricky to do the cataracts. Uh, I usually use the dome to open the capsule, but uh, here uh, you, it's very elastic, so you have to use uh, something that's sharp. So I'll use uh, the cystitome first and then capsule rexus. Because the capsule, capsule is very elastic, you have to be careful uh, with the direction of the pulling. Normally we, we, we pull towards the way we want uh, the capsule rexus to run, but here we pull uh, the ca capsule or flap 90 degrees to the direction you want it to go to. So, uh, that's uh, starting the capsule axis here. See, I'm, I'm pulling inwards rather than the usual out uh, direction of the capsule axis, and you can still still see the capsule uh, being pulled inwards because of its elastic and at the same time the capsule rex is running 90 degrees to the direction of my pulling I'm pulling inwards toward the center of the lens and at the same time the capsule, uh, capsule rex is running uh, 90 degrees uh, to that uh, pulling direction so this is the most tricky part of the uh, cataract and uh, the development of cataract the six years old of course implanting the lens here as a standard uh, we target to be uh, to end up because he's six years old so we target about plus one there's a curve to to wh where you should target your refraction because with time they get myopized a little bit so uh you you calculate the intraocular lens implant to to uh, at this uh, uh, forming a curve it should be a plus uh, one for this age hydro section um not much hydro delineation you'll find here that the the lamella cataract actually went up out completely out of the capsule almost outside the lens including the nucleus so so it went out completely there so it's mainly irrigation aspiration rather than uh, phaco but we'll use the phaco probe as usual to manipulate the materials and remove them okay so it's, it's mainly just irrigation aspiration use a chopper just to manipulate things up the, but uh, there's no hardness to this cataract at all it's just completely soft cataract this kind of lamellar cataract is usually congenital uh, the developmental so it starts after birth and it's usually bilateral asymmetrical in this case uh, we do it actually both eyes uh, under general anesthesia at the same time it's bilateral simultaneous cataract extraction. So we'll use the J-cannula to clean the capsule. Uh, the, uh, here we don't he need to do a posterior capsule rexus as the, the kid is old enough to sit on the egg uh, later if we need to, to, the, the capsule becomes opacified. The J-cannula we'll use here as usual like we use with the adults. So we wash the material, uh, clean the capsule, clean the cortical material from the fornix as, as much as we can so that we decrease the amount of scarring that uh, kids uh, would get because uh, the younger the the patient the more more active was these cells and uh, the more chances of getting uh, getting uh, capsule pacification so we clean as much as we can J. Kenny does a good job doing that cleans all the cells and even the, the fornix where you don't see We try to target to get to get about five millimeters uh, capsule rexes. This is about four point uh, four point five, so it's a little bit less than uh, what we want. So I I refilled the J cannula because it's uh, 
I use all the 10 cc but, but just to make sure that I clean as much as I can the cortical material for, for the fornix and the, to, to produce a very clear posterior capsule uh, the use of J cannula here is uh, safer than the IA. Uh, the uh, it clean does the same job, but mu much more efficient because it cleans all the uh, minute cells. Here I'm injecting Helon to inflate the capsule, and uh, I'll implant the, the intraocular lens, which is here ZCB00 plus 34. Again, the calculated intraocular lens was uh, plus 36 or 35 and a half. So I uh, implanted 34, so just, uh, first of all, this, this is the highest power for this lens, <laughs> uh, this kind of lens, and I don't, didn't want to implant uh, a lens that uh, has glistenings, because the Acrosoft SN60 AT can go up to a plus 40, but again, uh, I don't like the glistenings, the, the quality of the, the, the optics after a while, uh, it forms uh, vacuoles inside the, uh, the lens and affects the uh, contrast sensitivity long term and visualization of the fundus. The material of the, the, uh, the uh, AMO uh, ZCB00 is better, with, ha has a nice optic edge and it's, uh, it's also uh, uh, aspheric lens, uh, wavefront front uh, uh, guided. Uh, to for the aberrations it decreases the the uh, aberrations. We do the same thing. I always try to implant the lenses in a vertical position, so uh, I put the lens to make sure that it's uh, in a vertical position, and I clean as much as uh, I can the interior cell uh, and interior uh, cellular material from the back of the interior capsule to make sure to decrease the chances of uh, having uh, the. Uh, anterior capsule opacification or posterior capsule opacification as much as we can. So went out and did the IA and cleaned up any cortical material. So we, we here we did the J cantlia after the uh, see the the problem with the kids too is that they, they have low scleral rigidity so the eye tends to collapse easy. So here I'm hydrating the wounds well I'm using Avalox here to uh, to guard against the infections and uh, hydrate and seal the wound but in kids we, we uh, for this age we usually put uh, an absorbable fine suture like a 9 or 10 uh, vicryl because we don't need we can't remove it later so here I'm putting the, the, the suture so uh, because the kids of course are active they can rub their eyes and can uh, so we have to make make sure that it's uh, the eye or the eye is well sealed. Um, went really well. The uh, we did both again with both eyes by uh, asymmetrical uh, because we don't want to put the kid uh, twice to sleep. And the case was done and went really well. Thank you very much for watching.